Hey there, and let's get to it. The next thing we're looking at in the toolbox is the titles tool. This is a pretty basic form of graphic generation, but thanks to the rich text editing format, it actually gives you quite a lot of power. So let's take a look. To add any of the title tools, all you have to do is click, drag, and drop the tool anywhere you'd like it to go. By default, the title will be five seconds long, but you have the option of clicking and dragging its edges to make it longer or shorter. If you're going to be using this tool a lot and you'd rather it wasn't five seconds by default, it's pretty easy to change. You just go into your project settings, into the edit panel, and specify how long your standard generator is going to be. So I can change that to 10 seconds, click save, and then next time I drag and drop a new title, it will now have a longer duration. I'm going to stick to the text tool for now to focus on the variety that it offers us. But before I even start working on it, what I'm going to do is expand my screen slightly, go into view, safe area, and on. What you're seeing right now are your title and action safe lines. These act as guidelines to your action and the graphics that you add to your films. So ideally anything that pertains to the story that's important for the viewer to see should be inside of the outer bounding box. Any titles, credits, or subtitles should be constrained within the box on the inside to make sure nothing gets cut off if it's being projected somewhere and the ratio of the screen is off or if it's being broadcast on a CRT display. This particular film has a 16 by 9 ratio, but you can see there's black bars already built into the footage. So I can go back into the safe area menu and select my aspect ratio. So now the title saves have jumped to a 235 ratio, and I know that as long as I stay within the inner bounding box, I'm safe. Now let's open up the inspector and start working on the title. At the top, I'm able to input the name of the film. Underneath that, I can pick my font, the weight of my font, the color. It's always a good idea, even if you want pure white in your titles, to use something that's off-white. That will ensure that the colors are properly rendered out and there won't be any aliasing issues. I have tracking controls and letting or line spacing underneath if I had more than one line. Um, most of these controls are what you would find in any type of text editor. Got the ability also to change everything to all caps, which is pretty nice. Change the justification, the anchor point, and the position. Now, if you prefer to grab the titles with your mouse, you can do so by activating your transform controls, and then click and dragging the title down. But keep in mind that you will be changing the position of the entire layer. So you're not really targeting the X and Y positions of the rich text. You are targeting the transform controls. And the difference is that if I was to keep moving the title using the X position, I will eventually move it out of the layer. So be mindful of that. I would prefer to reset my transform controls to make sure I know exactly where my limits are and then click and drag on the X and Y positions. Underneath that you have your shadow and outline controls. The shadow will be invisible up until you specify how much you want to offset it by. And the stroke is also revealed as soon as you start making changes to the size. So now that we've done all this, what is all this rich text business? Well, all it means is that if I was to put in a separate line of text, I'm able to modify it separately from the line above it. All the same controls apply to the rest of the title options, and we'll be taking a look at scrolling credits separately in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.